Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. There has been another new Evocati patch. This is the 3.12.0 D build. Let us delve into the patch notes and take a look. These videos are made possible thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members, so thank you so much to you guys. If you do enjoy my videos and would like to help support the channel even further, all of the links are in the description below. Also, if you want to be in with a chance to win a Mercury Star Runner, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and like and comment on any video I post between the 25th of November and the 9th of December. So firstly, we have a couple of potential images of the new Origin 400i. Now do bear in mind that these are not official reveals. It may have been faked. It could be real. We don't know 100%. They do look pretty real if you want my opinion on that. And personally, it's not really to my taste. I'm not a massive Origin fan, but I do think it looks pretty cool. And I reckon many people will actually love this design. It kind of looks like a mini 890 jump more than anything. But that is all we have right now on the 400i front. So Alpha 3.12.0D is now on the PTU for the Eva Catis. Testing focus now includes the weapon zeroing and wheeled vehicle control changes. Talking of weapon zeroing tier zero. It says this system provides the player with a way to change the zeroing on their weapon sights. This allows shots at further distances without having to alter aim to account for bullet drop. While aiming down sights, a player can manually or automatically change the zeroing on their scope. Aiming down sights will show the current zeroing settings as well as a distance finder at your crosshair for scopes that support this. And apparently the maximum distance varies per scope. You can set your weapon zeroing manually or to the distance finder amount by pressing the page up button and reset the zeroing back to zero meters by pressing the page down button. This is a great new addition and although it may not have a great wealth of use in the current alpha as there isn't a lot of FPS planet side going on, it does bring the game a little closer to the desired place that CIG wants Star Citizen's FPS to be at. And it may even be part of something they're hoping to get in for Theatres of War before they bring us that whenever that will arrive. I am working on a video that will talk further about CIG's plan for the FPS end goal in Star Citizen, so do keep your eyes out for that one. For locations, they have replaced two of the four refining kiosks in the refining decks with kiosks to sell unrefined ore. So now there will be two to sell ore and then two to refine ore, which I think is a good idea. They've also updated the refinery deck smelters effects and they've applied further polish on repainting the planets. For gameplay, there are some wheeled vehicle and aiming improvements. These are mostly surrounding the Grey Cat ROC plus some other vehicles as well. But they've reworked the control scheme for wheeled vehicles to include V-Joy controls and getting the wheeled vehicles and ship controls closer together. I suppose this is to make the controls more unified and intuitive when you go between them both. The ROC mining arm will now follow the V-Joy indication in manual gimbal mode and you press the G button to swap this mode. They've added the ability to disable the auto brake state for vehicles, which would always activate if no forward or backwards inputs above 10% were added. You can actually press V to turn off the auto braking. So I guess it is going to be so that vehicles can roll further and feel a bit more natural and realistic, which I, I do like. They have added the ability to freeze the aim vector in manual gimbal mode, which is right alt and G. Not really sure what that does, although they did say that the gimbal freeze will reset once the gimbal mode is changed again. They've added more inversion settings for wheeled vehicle controls. And finally, the ROC mining arm will now recenter before it is retracted and will no longer be completely offset after getting in and out of the vehicle. All of these sound like some pretty nice quality of life improvements for vehicles and specifically the ROC as well. Hopefully it'll mean that the mining arm will no longer just bug out and point upwards all the time. There is a countermeasure burst setting update. They said they set the default lure burst size to 3 and added keybinds to increase burst amount size by tapping the right alt and H or decrease the burst size by tapping left alt and H. So basically this determines how many lures that you fire in one shot. They were flares, so basically you will send out three lures when you hit the button, or you can increase that to four, five, or decrease it to two or one. It is up to you. So aggravated criminal damage is now prevented from being given in green zones. They've adjusted all ground turrets to have a higher signature for faster player detection, and they've added game setting options to switch exit seat actions as hold versus immediate when pressing or using a turret or pilot seat. They said the default hold 
is 250 milliseconds and I actually really like this feature as I often catch the exit seat button by accident while I'm in the middle of flying. I could be planet side, I could be mining, I could be in combat. So this is really good. So there has been seven bug fixes. A couple of them are ships carrying vehicles or other ships can now use the repair, rearm and vehicle management services. And you should be able to now sub-target turrets on ships and cycling the sub-targets iterates over all rather than all of one item type, which is very nice. Plus a couple of more or less major fixes. There's also been six client crashes fixed and two server crash fixes. So again, a really important patch with a lot of quality of life improvements. It seems like going into 3.12, they are really focusing on quality of life, polishing certain things that we have already to make them a lot more functional and usable. And I'm really excited to get my hands on it. But with that said, those are the latest leaked patch notes for 3.12 and the 400i. Do make sure you subscribe and tick that notification bell to keep up with all the leaks as they happen. If you can do me a big favor, hit that like button as well. Really appreciate that. And come and hang out with us over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. Links are in the description. Everybody is welcome. And again, a big thank you to all of my generous patrons and channel members who make these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.